In this video, I'm going to fire up the Netgear Neo TV Pro streaming player for the very first time. We're going to set it up and do a device walkthrough. So let's do this. Now, right now, I have the Neo TV Pro plugged into my television set via HDMI, which is, by the way, the only way you can connect this device to your television set. And I'm going to plug it in for the very first time. And there we go, we have the Neo TV splash screen. And now we get a welcome message. It says, welcome to the Neo TV streaming player. Setup should take a couple of minutes. During the setup, you will connect the player to your home network and set your video resolution. So I'm gonna press okay on the remote control. Now the first thing we have to do is select the TV resolution. And it defaults to HDMI auto, which sounds good to me. But if you want, you can specify 1080p, 1080i, 720p, 480p, or 480i. Let's hit OK. The next step is to select Neo TV standby timing. So like a computer, if the device hasn't been used in a certain amount of time, it'll go into standby. You can choose not to use this feature. You can do it after 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or 60 minutes. 30 minutes is the default, so we'll just keep it on that for now. If I don't like that, I can always change it at a later date. The next step here is to select the Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to sign into my home wireless network, and I'll join you on the other side of that. Okay, so I signed into my home wireless network, and the next step here is to look for updates. And apparently I'm running some old firmware on this device, and there is a new version, so I'm going to download that right now. Okay, the Neo TV Pro just downloaded the new firmware, installed it, and rebooted. So it says, thank you for completing the Neo TV setup. Now you are ready to enjoy internet movies, TV shows, videos, photos, and music instantly streamed to your TV. So I'm going to press OK, and here we go. So we're set up and ready to go. But before I take you through a walkthrough on the user interface on this device, why don't you check out this teaser for my new YouTube channel, Texplorers. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, last fall I reviewed the Neo TV NTV200 streaming player. This device is the pro version of the Neo TV line. So it offers everything the NTV200 offered, but it also offers Intel WiDi, or wireless display. So as long as you have a laptop that's WiDi capable, you can actually mirror your PC on your television screen. And for me, that's a big deal. Now, WiDi isn't necessarily widespread, but if you have the functionality on your laptop, it's a nice feature. And in my next video, I'll actually try out the WiDi on this device for the very first time. Now, what you see here is the Neo TV interface, and I actually like it a lot. It's one of the better interfaces on these streaming media players. Now, personally, I think this layout is superior to the Roku layout even though the Roku is an excellent device if you're looking for a streaming player. And I have several videos on Roku on my channel, so if you want, you can check those out. But let's just go through the interface here. On the far left, you have a menu, which starts with My Channels, Most Popular, Movies and TV, News and Education, Web TV, Music and Photos, Lifestyle, and games. On the bottom here you have settings. And we're going to go all the way up to my channels because my channels shows you everything that's available on the device. Every other selection on the left hand side there is a filter for a specific category. So the first thing on deck here is the Intel Wide-Eye wireless display. And like I said we're going to go into that in my next video. The next selection here is Netflix. 
Now, if memory serves me, this Netflix interface is the most modern available right now. Let me quickly sign into my Netflix and we'll check out what the interface looks like on this device. Okay, so I signed into my Netflix account and this is not the most recent Netflix user interface. This is the one previous to the most recent one. And one thing I've found on devices that use this interface that's not the most recent is that the DVD artwork or the artwork for the movie doesn't populate very quickly or in some cases at all. Other than that, I have no problem with this interface. I actually like this interface a lot. I just wish that the artwork would populate faster. So let's just move on over here and take a look at some of these selections here. Now one thing I noticed on this interface is that it's a little bit slower than the newer interface, which is a little bit disappointing. Otherwise this box seems to be pretty snappy, so for now I'm going to blame the software, but the jury's still out. We'll see how snappy this streaming media player ends up being. I'm going to hit the home button on the remote, and we're going to dump out of here into the main menu. Now in this menu, the box seems to be pretty snappy. But in Netflix, it seems to lag a little bit. Let's go over to Hulu Plus. I'm not a Hulu Plus subscriber, but you do have Hulu Plus on this device. I'm just going to check into here. I know you need to sign in when you go into Hulu Plus, but I'm just going to give you an idea of what it looks like. And it's pretty much the regular Hulu interface, from what I can tell when I've tried this out on players before. It asks me if I'm already a Hulu Plus subscriber. Again, I'm not and it seems pretty snappy when I'm going through the menus here. So, again, I think the lagginess was because of the Netflix software. And there's a selection of videos from Hulu Plus here. So let's go back to the home menu, or the home screen here, and there's a couple other options here. You have Cinema Now, which is an a la carte rental and purchase service where you can actually buy and rent movies. So let's check that out. And they have a pretty much standard interface. I've seen this on other streamers before. And it's powered by Roxio Now. So you have a selection of movies, TV shows, and then you can search all of them put together. And I'm just going to select movies here. And you see the new arrivals here. And... Let's go to something that you can rent and buy. Freak Dance, never heard of it, but you can rent it for $4.99 in HD, rent it for $3.99 in SD, or buy it for $14.95 and own it. I'm the type of person that likes options. I like a lot of services available on the devices that I have. So having something like Cinema Now on here in addition to a Hulu Plus and Netflix service and also in addition to Voodoo, which we'll get into in a minute, it's nice to have a lot of options to choose from. So I'm going to hit the home button again. And then we have Film Fresh over here. Let's check that out. Now Film Fresh is also powered by Roxio Now, and you have the same interface that you had on Cinema Now. So let's click on Movies here and see what the selections are in the new arrivals here. It looks like you have some different selections here than was on Cinema Now. So, if you wanted to watch The Artist, you could rent it for $3.99 or buy it for $14.99. And the HD prices are the same as Cinema Now. Let's go back to the home menu. And we're going to go through a couple of these things, and then we're going to just look at what the other apps are. Now you have Voodoo HD Movies on here and Voodoo Apps. We're going to check out Voodoo Movies first. And again, it's a rental slash purchase service. And most of the streaming boxes out there right now offer Voodoo. So it's just loading up now and it looks like the regular Voodoo interface. As you can see here, you can start a free trial, which will give you a $5.99 credit towards renting a movie or actually buying a movie if you wanted to. Uh, but we're going to go to Browse here and check out what they have. And let's just go to, I don't know, something here just to check out the prices. And 
you can rent 21 Jump Street from 399 that would be SD. The prices on this are HDX, which is the best streaming available right now, and it's only from Vudu. You can rent this movie for $5.99 in the highest definition possible, or own it for $17.99. If you want to rent it in regular HD, it's $4.99, and if you want to buy it, it's $17.99. If you want it in SD, it's $3.99 for a rental and $13.99 to purchase. Let's go back to the home menu here and check out Voodoo Apps. Now again, you have the same interface on this, apparently. So these are the Voodoo Apps. And let's just run through this quickly. You have Voodoo Movies, which we already looked at. You have Facebook, NBC Nightly News, Weather, Today Show, Discovery, Picasa, Flickr, True Blood. Now that's not the show True Blood. They're behind-the-scenes clips from True Blood and teasers. And if you see anything that's linked to a TV show on here, it's pretty much all behind-the-scenes stuff or teasers. You have X-Play, CNBC, Nova, TED Talks, UVTV, New York Times, Dolby Digital Plus, Twitter, The Rachel Maddow Show, National Lampoon, Dexter, Hidden Universe, Drive Film HD, Daily Motion, Delicious TV, Attack of the Show, AC360, Motors, Stock Tracker, Big Love, Scam School, MSNBC Morning Joe, Californication, CNN Daily, Hung, Techzilla, Entourage, Scene Stealers, Accelerate, Bored to Death, Best of Revision 3, From the Top at Carnegie Hall, ESPN, Around the Horn, Zeitgeist, Meet the Press, Dig Nation, Fast Draw, Hack 5, Indie Film Nation, iFanboy, Philharmonic Orchestra, Pixel Perfect, CNN Now in the News, Rocket Boom, Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Totally Rad Show, System, The City Concealed, Princeton University, Flight of the Concords, Good Housekeeping, What's for Dinner Tonight, White House Weekly Address, The Screening Room, Face the Nation, Slate V, The Dig Reel, Mike and Mike Moment, London Landscape TV, The New Yorker Animated Cartoons, CNN Student News, CNN In Case You Missed It, Amanpour, Walt Mossberg Personal Tech, Katie Couric's Notebook, Washington Post Photo Stories, New York On The Clock, Monocle, Bill Moyer's Journal, Irrelevant Astronomy, Washington Post HD Podcast, and Andy Jordan's Tech Diary. So you have quite a few Voodoo apps to choose from. Let's hit the home button and go back. And I think the next one might be YouTube. Let's see what the YouTube interface is on this device. Okay, I actually like this YouTube interface better than the YouTube lean back that was on the Neo TV NTV 200 originally. I haven't played around with that player in a while, so I don't know if they changed the YouTube from YouTube Lean Back to this. But I definitely like this because it allows you to browse YouTube. You can discover channels, you have animation, automotive, beauty and fashion, causes and nonprofits, celebrities and gossip, comedy, cooking and health, family, film and entertainment from TV, gaming, how to do it yourself. Music, news and politics, science and education, sports, tech, vlog stars. So you have a variety of different selections, different categories that you can search through. So I like that. The next selection down here is search. So you can basically search for whatever you want. You have to do it with the on-screen keyboard though. Now the interesting thing about this on-screen keyboard is that I'm just going to type in tech harvest here. If you click on a letter, you will get suggestions for the second letter. So commonly, the next letter after T would be E, H, O, or A. In my case, it would be an E. So it makes typing a little bit quicker using this predictive text. Let's back out of this. Then if you have a YouTube account, you have My YouTube, where you can actually sign in and check out your videos, your subscriptions, your favorites. Now you can also pair this YouTube app with your phone, with your mobile device. 
Now I've done this before with a Magnavox streamer, but with this device I don't see a need for it because you can actually get an app for your Android or iOS device to use as a remote control for the Netgear Neo TV Pro. So basically if you're going to pair your mobile device with the Netgear Neo TV Pro, you might as well use it with the remote control app and not just YouTube. And then, of course, at the bottom you have featured videos, which you can just watch at your leisure. So it's a definite improvement over YouTube Lean Back that used to be on these devices, and it's a nice interface. Let's go back to the home here. Now, I'm just going to run through the rest of these. We don't want to go through each and every one of them because there's quite a few channels on this device. I just wanted to hit the big ones. So the next selection here, we have Pandora. Then we have Data Bazaar Media. Fling Q, you have Facebook, Picasa, Live, Yup TV, Spirit Clips, Twitter, and apparently that's pretty much everything that's on this device. Originally I thought that my channels showed you all the channels available for the device, but that's not the case. Now if memory serves me, the original device that I reviewed had all the channels available in the top selection, but obviously that has since changed. So let's go over to most popular and check out what's there. Now it looks like everything that was in my channels is in the most popular here. Let's just go down here. Um, it looks like you also have Revision 3, Crunchyroll, TED, Engadget, Texas Hold'em, which is a game, Coldcast TV, TV Guide, Fora TV, TMZ.com, the WB Trailers, Blackjack, Memory, Break.com, NASA 360, Take 180, The White House, ACM, KTVU, Fox, Showtime Podcasts, Penguin Shamble, Four, Making Of, Kaboom, Golf, Sudoku, Singing Fool, Noise Vox, GT Channel, Rock Swap Adventures, Game Trailers, La Blagotech, KiroTV.com, College Humor, Nylon TV, Fun Little Movies, Live Sockets, WPT, World Poker Tour, National Lampoon, Cosmox, Skull Candy, Ford Models, Etsy, GigaOM, Funny or Die, MLB.com, Fantasy 411, G4 TV, V, F, and Heart. I don't know if that's for fart or if it's just F in a heart. Truck Wars, Schraup, CNN, CNBC Video Podcasts, PBS Podcasts, EarthTouch.com, HD, DW Podcast, Discovery Channel, CNET, ESPN Podcast, Fox News Podcast, HBO Podcast, Harvard Business Publishing, iSkateboard, iVid, LeMonde.fr, Tagesschau, Schweitzer Fernschen, The New York Animated Cartoons, MTV Buzz, MTB Freeride, TechPodcast.com, Thai Body, UEFA, WDR Podcast, 2DF Podcast, International CES 2012, BAM TV, Appetite for Life, Southern Hospitality, Local Online News.tv, Macy's, Makeover America, Fitness, Play Sports TV, Formula Drift, Fred, Streetball Tour, and Trans World TV. So that looks like a large list. Let's check out what's under Movies and TV. Pretty much a lot of things we've looked at before. Uh, making of, I don't know if that's something new. And that pretty much we covered on Most Popular. Let's check out News and Education. Looks like we've covered all of these. Again, just a different filter. Let's check out Web TV. Again, we went through all of these. Let's check out Music and Photos. I don't know if we went over Singing Fool, but those are your Music and Photo apps on this device. Let's see Lifestyle. Pretty much went through all of these. Looks like Live Sockets might be new. And finally, we have games down here. 
So that's the first time setup and walkthrough on the Netgear Neo TV Pro streaming player. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up or favorite this video because it helps out my channel. In my next video, we're going to try out the Intel Y-Die for the very first time and see if it's going to be an actual solution to using a PC on my TV, and that way I can get rid of one of my home theater PCs. So stay tuned for that. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.